Hello there. This is the family doctor. cabinet there. I understand, sir. And the case records, all my patients, all my former patients, are in the desk. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, I better take my diploma. I guess that won't do you any good. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, you'll probably want that in New York. New York. Ah, uh, that's queer, isn't it? Uh, what do you mean, Dr. Adams? Well, I mean, here you are, a young doctor just starting out. You've just been graduated from a big medical school in New York. Just finish your internship, and you come out here to Cedarton to start your practice. And here I am, after spending 20 years in this little old town, tending to all the ills of my neighbors, listening to their mental and spiritual woes as well, just starting off to go to New York. Well, sir, they say fair exchange is no robbery, you know. Fair exchange. Hmm. Well, Grayson... I think you're going to like it here in Cedarton. Oh, I'm sure I am, Doctor. You'll have some peculiar sorts of people to deal with. That is, you'll think they're peculiar when you first meet them. Oh, I think I'll get along all right, sir. Oh, yes, you'll get along. No doubt of that. The folks I've introduced you to so far have taken to you mighty well. I'm glad of that, sir. Sit down just a minute, Doctor. Thank you, sir. I think maybe I'd better tell you about a few of the folks you're liable to meet here. <laughs> well, that might help. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me see. Where shall I start? Oh, I see Maddie Clark just walking by the building. Maddie's the dressmaker. She makes all the dresses for those ladies of Cedarton who like to pride themselves on the fact that they don't have to make their own. <laughs> I see. Maddie's given to a little bit of gossip now and then, Dr. Grayson. She doesn't mean any harm by it, but once in a while she'll say something that'll like to set the whole town upside down. Now, that's the time you will have to make her think she's right sick and put her to bed. Until she gets over her talking spell. <laughs> and then, well, there's the Bliss family. Rip's just been elected mayor, and there's no healthier person in Cedarton. So you don't have to worry about him. His wife, Marcia Bliss, is a good healthy woman, too. In fact, she's so healthy, she, she thinks everybody else is sick. <laughs> <laughs> but their daughter, Ella Mary... Well, Ella Mary Bliss is one of those people who just can't seem to pass a germ by without putting out her hand and giving it a personal welcome to their constitution. You'll have to watch Ella Mary. She doesn't complain much, but she needs watching. I understand, sir. And then, let me see. Oh, yes, the Windsor family. Now, Judge Windsor's all right, but you'll have to watch his heart. He's taken on so much fuel in the past ten years, I'm afraid his valves are going to just clog up sometime and stop. He won't take advice, so... Keep a little adrenaline on hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And Mrs. Windsor's all right. Has a touch of hay fever once in a while, but if you tell her to stop eating strawberries or peaches or watermelon or whatever happens to be in season, her hay fever seems to disappear somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and their daughter, Faith, is a beautiful little girl. You don't need to worry about her, Grayson. She's the cream of the crop. Well, now, let's see. Oh, yes, there's the Maynards. Uh, Glenn Maynard's the minister of the Union Church here in Cedarton. He's a fine fellow. Plays a great game of tennis. I hope you have better luck with him than I have. 
Mrs. Maynard, well, she's one of the finest women I've ever known. And Dr. Grayson, any time you have a tough problem on your hands, talk to Mrs. Maynard. She'll straighten it out for you. Then there are the Maynard twins, Billy and Jimmy. They're great youngsters. Fortunately, I've been able to get them through the stage of the first cigar, but Dr. Grayson, those boys are 14 years old. Uh, you're a football player, aren't you? Yes, sir. I played quarterback for three years varsity and forward in basketball. Mm-hmm. Well, and you'll be able to do more for the Maynard twins than anybody else I could think of. Certainly more than I could ever do. You understand, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, then there's Griff Miller. Gosh, Jephiti. If you can make Griff stop doing all the hard work up at his boathouse on Miller's Lake, you'll do better than I have. I don't know how many times he's promised to hire some young fellow to do his hard work for him. He just never seems to get around to it. He's a fine old fellow, Griff is, but someday that old carcass of his is just going to lay down and say quits. And he doesn't have to work, either. He's got that gold mine of his. Gold mine? Yeah, it's a few months ago. He... Uh, excuse me. Dr. Adams, uh, Dr. Grayson's office. Oh, oh. <laughs> hello, honey. Yes, hello, we're just about finished. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be up the house right away. Mm-hmm. All right, Lou. Goodbye. Well, there you are, Doctor. I give you a Cedarton. Whether it's joys, it's heartaches, it's tears, it's laughter. For what it is, it's yours from now on. Thank you, Dr. Adams, and, well, I believe you know that I'll do my best. Sure, sure, I know you will, my boy. And whenever anything gets too tough for you to cope with, well, just drop me a line. I may be able to give you a hint or two. Well, now, I'd better take that diploma of mine down off the wall. Oh, let me get it for you, Dr. Adams. All right, thanks. There you are, sir. Well, I guess this is goodbye to the old office. I hope you get as much real life out of this little place as I have. I hope so, too, sir. And good luck to you. Well, well, good goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Adams, and good luck to you in New York. Oh, now, where do you suppose Rick Bliss is? Ain't that just like him to be late? Why, he was even late to his own wedding. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Mrs. Bliss. If Mayor Bliss doesn't get here, Judge Winter can always do the honors. Hmm. Yes, I suppose so. But after all, it's really the mayor's job. Hey, folks, here they come. Here come the Adamses. Oh, my land, Dr. Adams. Oh, well, 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 there's certainly a lot of you out today. Circus must be coming to town. Grand Adams, how can you joke at a time like this? It's the only way to pass it off, honey. Hello, Bill. Hello, hello, Doc. Hello, Judge. Hey, Doc, you know, uh, you told me once that uh, I might get a fatty heart bread too much. Yes, Bill, I did. <laughs> well, Doc, if I do get one of them things, whatever it is, uh, can I count on you coming back and taking care of me? <laughs> sure, Bill, sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> thanks, Doc. I don't want to bother you no more. I know you've got a lot to say to a lot of other folks, so... Well, I... Doc, <laughs> so you're leaving Cedar tonight. are you? Yes, Judge Windsor. But we'll come back once in a while and pay a visit to all you folks. Well, see that you do. Yes, sir. You'd better come back once in a while. If you don't, I'll swear out a bench warrant for you. <laughs> well, Doc. Hello, Pete. Well, you know, May's Drug Store just won't be the same without you around the town, Doc. You bet it won't. Hey, Chick, what are you doing down here? There's nobody up to the store taking care of the customers. What customers are all down here to the station saying goodbye to the Adamses? Well, now I guess maybe you're right, Chick. <laughs> all right, you can stay. Hey, thanks. Dr. Adams? Yes, Chick? I, I want to thank you for all you've done for me, you... Well, you, you kind of straightened me out on a lot of things I sort of had crooked up to the time I met you. Oh, well, Chick, that's the job of an old country medic, I guess. <laughs> hey, I think we men had better get over and say a goodbye or two to Mrs. Adams. Well, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> goodbye, Grant Adams. <laughs> goodbye. Oh, Jess Rankin. Goodbye, Jess. 
You know, Doc, most folks here in this town probably think I'm crazy. Oh, now, Yes, they do. They think I'm sort of crabby and ingrown. But, Doc, they don't know the the thing out of my past life I've had to live down. Never mind now. Never mind, Jace. That's between you and me. Yes, Grant. And no matter how far away you go from Cedarton, no matter whether you ever come back or not, I'll never forget that you kept my secret. Jace, that also is the job of an old country medic. (laughs) Thank you, Grant. Thank you. <laughs> well, now, Mrs. Bliss, I don't think I'd know. Oh, all my life I've worried about where that man is. He's never where he should be at the right time. Oh, but maybe he has some official duties as mayor to attend to. His official duties is down here right now. He's got something to say to you, Miss Adams, and something to give you as a pardon gift from the folks of Cedarton. Oh, well, that's all right. Oh, no, it ain't all right. And let's find that out when I get to him. I guess we'll just have to send it to you. Grant, Grant, we've got to get on the train. It's starting. Yes, honey. All right. And goodbye, folks. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc Adams. Hey, wait. Wait a sec, will you? Yeah. Hello, Grant. Here, take this bag, will you? It's from the gold mine. From your gold mine? Yeah, yeah. from the gold mine. Here, uh, take it. Can you catch? The gold. Uh, there you are. All right, Griff. Thanks. Good luck to you, Griff. I thought you'd never get on this train. Well, I had to catch this little bag that Griff Miller tossed to me, Lou, just as the train was pulling out. Bag from Griff Miller? Well, what is it? Look, it's from his gold mine. Oh, three little gold nuggets. And he's written something here on the bag. It's in pencil. I don't know whether I can read it or not. Let me see. For two great people, Doc and Mrs. Adams, three gold nuggets, meaning... Faith, hope, and charity. The three virtues. Oh, Grant, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Look how he spells virtue, honey. V-E-R-C-H-O-O. This is the family doctor. Goodbye.